ברוכים הבאים לפסטיבל דוק אביב ה-22 ולתחרות הבינלאומית. אנחנו שמחים לארח בפסטיבל את רדו צ'וניצ'וק, במאי הסרט ביתה של משפחת ענקה. אורך השיחה יהיה חצי שעה, ואנחנו מזמינים אתכם להשאיר שאלות באזור של ה-Q&A, לא בצד, בכל שלב שהוא. ודוק אביב מודה מאוד למכון הרומני לתרבות על תמיכתם בסרט. אני אעבור לאנגלית, ומכאן ואילך גם ננהל את השיחה באנגלית. Welcome to the 22nd דוק אביב Film Festival and to the international competition. We are honored to have Radu Chonichuk, the filmmaker of Akasa, my home, with us today. The webinar will last 30 minutes. We invite you to leave your questions in the Q&A section at any time, at any time, not the chat, but the Q&A section. And Dr. Aviv wishes to thank the Romanian Cultural Institute for their support. So thank them. And, uh, And uh, Radu, I'm very happy to have the uh, uh, chance to meet and talk to you. Uh, I personally thought the film was overwhelming. Uh, it was very interesting. I'm sure there are a lot of questions to be asked regarding the aesthetics and the ethics and the context of the film. So I'll ask the, the first few questions and then we'll move to the questions from uh, uh, our audience. I'm sure they have some uh, interesting questions. Uh, questions of their own. Uh, so my first question is a question that is very trivial. I'm sure you have, have, you have heard it and answered it several times, so I'm sorry about that, but how did you get to the Enake <laughs> family? I'm sure I'm surprised by this question. How did you get to the Enake family to doing this film about uh, them? Well, I, I never got this question. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, thank you so much for having me here. Like, obviously, it's not obvious yet, but the honor is all mine. Doc Aviv has been always been on my radar. I've been following your work, and um, I think it's amazing that you're doing this, especially during uh, this horrible pandemic. Um, with, I've, I've, I, I, I'd say I, we were very privileged by the fact that the um, Enake family's um, father, by Jika Enake, was, all, was used to, uh, to the, the cameras and was used to uh, journalists coming there uh, in, in the park. They were tolerated there as the last family living in the Delta because he was working closely with the campaigners, that the campaigners, biologists, journalists, that were trying to promote the area and uh, trying to um, obtain that uh, reservation status, that protection status. Um, so he was like the local fixer. So when, when we got there with the cameras, he, was, he just treated us as any other journalist. Come on, I'll show you around with the boat. And this is actually uh, the, the, the first footage that we've got with the family was, uh, were interviews with him. We, we would do a lot of interviews and we didn't film the, the kids for, for a while because the mother was very protective and she knew that, uh, uh, any, that the journalists, uh, at some point, some journalists uh, made a story about them and uh, she had their, their kids uh, taken away by the social uh, security. So we understood that and we didn't want to push it. But at one point I was just left with, uh, I was just left with uh, three of the boys and I think there's a sequence in the film right after the drone when the kids were just playing with the small fishes and, and that was my first time that, that I got to actually spend, uh, uh, spend some, some time with the kids and just to observe them and see how they play and how they speak and everything. I was very curious about, uh, about, about them. And it, it was then when I understood that, um, that's that I need to to make a film I was I was there with the, the screenwriter of the film with Lina Toby we're both journalists we were just wanted wanted to do a reportage about the place and um, and we understood that we need to do a bit more that we have something extraordinary in front of our eyes and it's a bit more uh, complex than uh, we were we were uh, prepared to uh, 
you know, like a bit more complex than, than what the reportage could contain. And um, starting from there, we, I, I think we um, immediately knew that we're gonna, at one point, the father was gonna look at us and like gonna start wondering why do we come there every day? Journalists usually come for two days and go. And so we just um, explained to him that we want to do something um, on the on the long term we want to to take take the time to explain what's happening there and knowing that they have they, they will have to leave at one point because uh, the reservation laws are quite strict when it comes to people living in uh, fragile ecosystems we knew that time was going to come so we say okay let's make a film maybe a short film about their life there and the challenges the, the, the challenges the conflict was obvious. There were all these offic officials coming and like clashing, and they were on they 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 were on the run for the social services for twenty years now. And we just thought that we're going to make a film, and the film will end with them leaving the place. Mm -hmm. And that would that would have been like an open ending. And um, soon after that, we understood that it's getting uh, that. We, we need to continue the film when we saw the kids interacting with other kids in, in, in the city and uh, we just went for it. And four years later, we, we've, uh, we've made this film. And to, just to come back to your question, uh, we managed to stick around by being transparent. And uh, by the time that we, this, we understood that we're not just journalists, we, um, in, in this context, in this work context, we, um, you know, we became close friends with the family, and uh, we 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 decided also to build a social project around the film, and uh, we also published a book, so it was quite visible, and it's quite uh, um, it developed into something that we weren't expecting to. So it was all this all these dynamics around the film that kept us together. We understood that their greatest fear was for the kids to be separated by the, by the, the parents. And um, we understood that that wasn't the solution for the, the children. So we had this, this whole uh, uh, campaign around the, during the filming uh, around the family. We, we had psychologists, doctors, educators, uh, social assistants, NGOs, foundations, like uh, a lot of energies uh, were put to build this uh, integration uh, model instrument designed for the, the family so that the family would have um, a smoother transition to, to the life in the city and the less traumatic transition obviously for, for the children. So uh, at that point we weren't journalists anymore and <laughs> that, that was for sure. So, so, so in a sense what you, you, what you are saying is is that as documentaries you on the one hand tried to be very transparent uh, which is amazing because the, the the people of the family the members of the family actually do not interact with you at any point of the film and on the on the other hand you're saying that as documentaries you also tried to help them with social workers and so on so they they will be able to to integrate um and in this sense i may May I ask you, do, do you feel this is, uh, in general and in particular for your film, this is the, the way that you feel is the uh, correct ethical attitude? I mean, the way that on the one hand you are making a film, but on the other hand you are actually trying to help the people that... Uh, because when we're talking about documentary, we're talking a lot about ethics. So was this your ethical uh, response or ethical stance towards the Anake family? I think it's quite uh, particular for this project. I wouldn't think, how, and until then, uh, I was a hardcore investigative journalist. I traveled the world. I, from when I was 20, I was undercover in factories and farms, and I was exposing crime and, and stuff like that. So being very, very careful with uh, my work ethics uh, in the field was all, all, always very important not to mess things up illegally, not to you know, create uh, false expectations to my characters and so on. So I, I was all, already quite radical on, on uh, these boundaries that I put between myself and the people I, I was working with. Um, but when it came to this project, and uh, I had to separate uh, these uh, 
um, it it was more about my personal ethics than uh, than my work ethics, honestly. Um, and when I understood that I can also be a, a human being uh, above a, a, a journalist or a filmmaker or whatever, I became a bit more free, even even creatively. So. Um, of course, it was always a, a question on how to uh, include all these efforts into the film and how to, because we film for four years, but there's like hundreds of hours of footage that have, that, that have uh, in our research, where there were also like our discussions with the team and with the specialists on how to do this, uh, how to help in, um, on the long term, what is the ethical way of, of doing this social intervention, how to, um, how not to make things worse by, you know, with our good uh, white people's uh, intentions, you know what I mean? So there was a lot of, uh, a lot of this talk that was also included in our research, like our, uh, the whole campaign, it was quite public. We had exposition, um, uh, public events and so on. So uh, at, um, at the end of, I mean, when we started editing, we just, uh, in our first, rough cuts we've had these bits as well scenes where we were talking about this and it, it became quite technical and it became quite different from the film we have today it became a film it was a film about how you do social intervention with a case as extreme as the family the Anakis families and and your discussions are among yourselves as the as the filmmakers or filmmakers as well because we were all like we were all involved in the integration process for me it was a research process as well to to actually do this uh, social project because uh, for 10 years i wrote about um, uh, marginalization and um, you know uh, uh, social dis dysfunctions like this but i never actually put my hand on like doing something like that. So I, I always research on, I knew like what are, not new, but I was accustomed like with, I already knew what's not being done by the authority, mm -hmm. for example. So it was for the first time when we actually had the platform uh, to make things as, as, as good as possible with our knowledge until then, with our experience, with our social network, professional network and so on. Um, yeah, so um, at one point when we, we took the decision that we were there when we st stick around for four years because we were interested in the, in the, the human um, experience of this family, of this journey, you know, from, from a life in the nature to one in the city. And we, um, there were a lot of arguments uh, on focusing on the family story as it is the, the most, um, that as it could also reach uh, a discussion about social integration, because that was a particular, uh, our involvement was a quite a particular, uh, let's say, event. And their experience was quite uh, universal, not only from a human perspective, but a social perspective as well. Uh, what happened with the people that are displaced, uh, not only in Romania, but in, uh, like with ethnic minorities that are displaced. We see stories like this all over the world. They are gypsies, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, yeah. they're gypsies, yes. So, um, yeah, we managed to focus on, uh, on uh, not manage, but we decided to focus on, on the family story strictly. But and uh, show the, our intervention by having our social project coordinator, which is Mihaela. She was coordinating all these efforts by having her in the film as a, um, you know, as a um, uh, um, exponent of our uh, our efforts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think and I think it was a good decision, by the way. So. Yes, it, 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 uh, I think it's very interesting and it's very uh, uh, makes the things much more complex uh, when, you, you, when you see the film. But before we move to the questions from the audience, because we over, already have some, uh, I think what you do in your film is not showing something like a culture versus nature and they are happy in nature, but they are sad in the city and so on and so forth, uh, because they're, they're, they're live uh, uh, the lives in the Delta are very poor, they are wretched people in this, in this sense. It's, uh, 
uh, not very romanticized in the way that uh, you see it. Uh, why did they actually choose to live there? Why did they never try and move to a place where, you know, they have running water and they don't have to fish the food and, and so on? Um, the father uh, had suffered uh, um, quite a big trauma when he was uh, left without a job uh, in the 90s. He worked at this very big rubber factory. Like, it was quite a famous uh, uh, factory in Romania. And he, he had a good social status. And I've met his family. His family is, his family is living better than, than my parents in many ways. You know, they had good jobs. They had nice house and everything. They're quite, you know, middle class people. And, um, and Jika always has always been a bit of a rebel since he was a kid. But when he was he got without when he was left without the job, he started drinking. He got into a fight. He got into prison, and Romanian prison in the nineties weren't very uh, good places. They were really really bad. And I think he suffered uh, a great trauma inside. Uh, because he liked to brag a lot and he was also like a bit doing a bit of boxing. I think he got um, the worst that you can expect from a, from a place like that. So when he got out, he just, uh, he got out pissed off at uh, everything around him. And uh, this, uh, you know, this disappointing, this disappointment had followed him throughout the years. And the fact that he didn't want to give his kids uh, to school or to whatever, even to the, the doctor, it was a consequence of this fear of not uh, losing them uh, by uh, having them traumatized as as he was. I didn't include this in the film as uh, Jika never told me. Uh, this is a very sensitive topic to him. I, he always told me that I've been to prison, never told me. Um, I mean, every time he was telling me uh, this story, there were different versions of it so it was uh, it was quite obvious for me that he was uh, trying to hide or trying to protect himself from that suffering and and this this was a uh, this was one of the the reason i i'd say the main reason and the, there was also this uh, big bucharest is quite a hostile city towards minorities towards poor people and uh, I, I mean I, I wouldn't i wouldn't say it's worse than other places in the world, but uh, it is bad. Uh, what you've seen in the film, like police brutality or the neighbors mm -hmm. shouting at the, at the kids, that's just like uh, 0 0.5 percent of what we've seen and what we've heard and, um, from the kids and the families' experience in the city. So um, there was also this fear of being uh, not, not, not fear, but they had experiences with uh, in buses they were thrown out or in the hospital they didn't receive help or in the city hall they didn't want to give them documents you know because you know they're gypsies because they're dirty because they don't you know speak well because and so on so there was this this is a consequence of discrimination as discrimination as well I mean they were pushed there um, and being pushed there was, uh, has strengthened the father's uh, position into living there and into embracing that way of life, which wasn't, uh, which was quite brutal in many ways. But it was feasible for, for him. Uh, a man that suffers, uh, like a human being that suffers so much, is very egocentric, is, is, is uh, you know, uh, is only interested in, in his sufferings and his needs and his, uh, you know, so being absorbed by himself, he uh, at, at many times didn't see the needs of his kids or, or his wife or his, the ones around him. So, yeah. Uh, so we'll move now. I have two questions from our uh, viewers. I'll uh, um, start with the first one. Well, uh, uh, Shafrira is asking, he's, say, he's telling you, he's writing, thank you for your sensitive, amazing movie. Uh, can you anticipate uh, the kids' uh, future? I, I, I believe she means Vali, but probably also the other nine, the other eight kids. Uh, uh, if we can, I mean, probably the best answer to this question is that 
their future would have been a lot more traumatic and dark if it wasn't for these people to take care of things for them to help them become a bit more independent in the city starting with losing their fear of going into a bus for example and uh, uh you know like uh, I, right now the children are all going to school and they're all like computer savvy and they do online classes and they do a lot of extracurricular activities there is a lot of volunteers working with them um, from our social project which is still a work in progress um, um, we managed to with great efforts we managed to buy them a house and a piece of land so the fear of them being separated is not there anymore and this has led to uh, uh, some uh, spectacular uh, um, results concerning their emotional state. Um, I think some of the kids will do well uh, in the future in school. Some of them, I'm, I'm afraid they're going to need a lot more help than society or us can, can give them. They're, you know, they're um, the parents, I mean, the mother is, has always been there and has always been a good partner for us. You know, we, um, the father is a very conservative patriarch and I'm afraid he's gonna, he's not gonna, um, I mean, he's healthier now, obviously he's, you know, the, the living, I mean, the, the, his life, um, the quality of life has, is better, but he would in an instance leave uh his his place now and and move somewhere where uh, he doesn't have to be concerned about uh, the electricity or uh, you know bills or whatever he would uh, he would leave and some of the kids share are sharing this this view as well um uh, three of the boys including the older brother are still working in the park they're tourist guides and uh, they're rangers there um the park, already, the park already exists, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's still going on. We're going to have the premiere of the film there, by the way, ah. uh, in a few weeks. So, <laughs> that's a dream come true. But yeah, the park exists, and the, and having a park like that is quite amazing for uh, for this city, which is suffocated by by concrete. You know, Ceausescu did a did a mess with the architecture here. So having that place is quite is very very benefic. You know, for 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 the for us for people living here so um i wouldn't want to be like a false optimist or you know like false uh, positive attitude but i'd say uh, they you know just knowing just they learn how to read and write and this gives gives them like a, an immense extra shot of having uh, access to more opportunities in in this world than uh, they they had before I, I, I yeah, it's it's not easy. It's never easy. Now there was another question from uh, uh, Dan who writes, "Thanks for a wonderful movie." He has two questions. One, uh, some of the family discussions seem quite intimate, like the discussion towards the end when the eldest son finally confronts his father, and. Uh, uh, it is an interesting question, yes, how did you actually film such scenes? And uh, the, the other question, what happened to the Anake family lately, you've, you've just answered, so maybe you could relate to the question regarding how did you get that internet in order to, to shoot this scene of the struggle in this uh, crowded apartment uh, when they are not actually relating to the camera, where it just feels so free, so emotional. It was an inter interesting process there as well. Um, I mean, from the beginning, we, when we decided on how to film this, how to approach it visually, uh, uh, you know, the story, we, you know, it's a family story. And for me, it was very important to have those bits on, of intimacy, of a family feeling uh, not only in those discussions but you know like uh, as a whole it was very important for me to have that emotion so um it, it kind of naturally went into this direction or i was um they, they didn't have the exercise of talking with each other or expressing feelings or you know it was quite a patriarchal family we don't express feelings we are tough you know like especially for the boys they had this pressure on them from from their father 
So, but I was all, I was uh, have being close to them. I, I knew like every day what was happening and the father's, uh, you know, like uh, existence. He would tell me like, okay, I'm disappointed of Vali. He's going crazy. And uh, Vali was also telling me uh, I'm disappointed by my father because he doesn't want to, you know, like uh, take care of us or, or whatever. But they, they never talked with each other. So in those moments, I, um, we did this exercise. Uh, of uh, okay, I'm uh, now we're in this room. If if the question was regarding the technicalities, I can go into that the sound and the cameras and everything. But you know what was behind the camera and the, the way I directed this whole this whole uh, this, these scenes were okay. You guys need to uh, you know like sit right now in this room and you need to tell each other what you're telling me on a daily basis. You need to start communicating because otherwise it's going to blow up. We're going to, you're going to be left without a family, Jika, you know? So uh, at the beginning they were like, okay, Jika, what's your problem with Vali? You know, like, and Jika would tell me, Radu, my problem is no, tell him, tell Vali, you know, like you need to express your feelings to him and the other way around. And if we only needed like five minutes and it just got started. Mm -hmm. They just, they, for the first time, they were actually communicating their frustrations and their, you know, like their fears and, and everything, their feelings. And this, you know, this, that whole thing kind of made the camera and made myself like a mediate, mediator of, you know, like for this, for this communication, which was extraordinary. Uh, but it came quite naturally, quite, quite, quite instinctual, it's quite, you know, so. And it was the same when the boys were talking to each other in the, in the, in the room. That scene was actually shot in, um, yeah, anyway, so uh, it was quite the same. It was an exercise of how, to, how we can express our feelings. And we did this with photography, with kids uh, as well. I mean, we did this uh, whole uh, project on the side on, um, uh, you know, we did this book with, with photos, like analog photos with, uh, made by the kids, for example. And these were all, all, all our, our exercises on how to point and how to understand our feelings and how to capture them on how to express them through different ways. This was like our photography project. And this actually like all the money that came from this book financed the, the whole social, social project. Um, so um, I, did, I don't think this film could have been made in a different way than it was made, which was, you know, like, quite uh, fluid and quite, uh, um, you know, natural, I'd say, quite organic. And even the big ethical questions were things that we were constantly discussing and constantly uh, we made sure that we are aware of, you know, like the implications of what we're doing, both on exposing the family and the way we're, we're doing uh, this exposure but also of our intervention and the way we're changing this story and their lives. So, yeah. So we have just uh, two or three minutes left. Uh, so maybe some of the questions are on the chat. So some of them you're already answered. Uh, so, but there is an interesting question here by Sarah. Uh, she's asking whether you are intending of coming back and trying to find out what happened to the Inake family, to the father, to the children uh, in, in future, within a few years in the future? Yeah, maybe. Um, I mean, we're, uh, we're in touch as we were before. We, we work, I mean, we work, we, we talk a lot. We, um, we, um, we have a solid relationship, I think. So at one point, maybe, um, maybe we would go back and try to see, do like a sort of like a follow up or, or, but having edited this film for almost two years, I came to the, you know, like I came to, in this whole process, you know, like if your vision is a bit fuzzy in the beginning and your intentions are a bit fuzzy, you know, like the, the more you work, the more you write, the more you, you know, discuss, the more you consult, things become more clearer. And even though, even the things that you are trying to say about, uh, you know, this experience of yours, your story. So uh, for me, I think when I, we got the edit lock and edited the last scene of the film, 
I, I, it was almost like, you know, like I took a rock from my chest and put it on the table. And I'd say like, this is my story. This is as clear as, uh, as, uh, as possible that I could tell this, uh, you know, experience that I've been uh, uh, given and being part, being part of. So I don't have the feeling of, although there are a lot of things happening, like interesting things happening already with the family it's, it would be interesting to see how they adapt to having their own place or mm -hmm. valley for example has its uh, the second kid on the way he just found out like a month ago so so like it, it would be interesting to see like whether he's gonna like have the same path as his father because that's that's what he knows that he's that's his repair right mm -hmm. so of course there's a lot of but for me i think even these little things are suggested at least in in the story uh, we managed to edit are, are already there these answers that you know we might get by filming another another film so i don't have uh, this but who knows you know like who, maybe valley is going to become president in 20 years so <laughs> that's going to be a good story right <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful documentary on itself uh, yeah. so as tony chuk first of all let me thank you so much uh, for being with us and thank you so much for this moving film. Uh, I, 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 I know that uh, there are probably so many other questions to ask you, but uh, we are limited time. And again, we are sorry that you won't, won't be, weren't able to physically be in Doc Aviv, but once you do the film about him being a president, ah. <laughs> okay, welcome you. You're going to open the festival with this. <laughs> the opening festival, I'm sure. Uh, so thank you very, very much. Dr. Shmuli, thank you so much. It was very interesting and engaging, and, and, uh, and I hope to meet you in person as well, as, as, as well as the audience. Oh, hopefully yes, and in the in the in the near future. So bye bye and take care. Stay well. So much, guys.